What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Okay, so how do you invest in wristwatches to make money? Well, first things first, you don't. <laughs> No, but seriously, all jokes aside, I think I've touched upon this in the past, but I've been getting a lot of new subscribers, special thanks, we just broke past 91,000, so uh, yeah, thank you guys, love you guys. But a lot of my newer subscribers are actually asking me about this, like what can I buy for under a thousand bucks, or are there any kind of sleeper watches that I can pick up for around 500 bucks and uh, kind of a good investment piece? Um, okay, we're gonna explore all of this today and uh, let's just nip this in the bud once and for all. It's 6.30 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, so in today's episode, I'm wearing my Rolex 1500, my date, a beautiful watch worn on a custom made 19 millimeter man cave leather strap. I've reviewed man cave leather in a dedicated episode. Click up here and check those out. Beautiful rally straps. Um, they just do amazing work. Him and his wife, uh, he makes the straps. She packages them just beautifully. Um, so again, man cave leather, you freaking rock. I'm gonna leave a link to their stuff in the description and check them out. Okie dokie, so investing in wristwatch watches. How do you do it? What are the ins? What are the outs? What's the reality of this whole situation? Well, you've heard this before, guys. You got to spend money to make money. So chances are, as difficult as it may be to comprehend, you're not really going to buy a $500 watch, sit on it, and then unload it decades later for like multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. I know. Painful, painful realization. But here's the fact of the matter. There are two inconvenient truths that no one wants to hear when it comes to investing really in anything, but specifically for the sake of this video, uh, wristwatches. Number one, it takes a whole lot of upfront capital. Number two, it takes a whole lot of patience. Said another way, uh, it takes time and money. But again, Starting out watch collectors, they don't want to hear that and they just want to know what can I buy to sit on and then flip and then this and that and just it, slow down. But okay, these are just words. I'm kind of just spouting them off at you. Um, let's go ahead and start off by looking at some tangible examples. First, the Seiko Blue Alpinist. That's right, the infamous SPB089. Now, you guys will recall that watch was released at $600 and because of a you know really sloppy release and just the, the nature of the market with the scalpers and the resellers, it was all gobbled up and then now you can find it listed for as high as $1,400. It used to be actually much higher, but uh, the market came down a little bit. Notice how I said it's listed as high as 1400. I didn't say it's selling as high as, as 1400. Those are very different statements. We'll get into that in a moment. But when you step back and you look at that, okay, that sounds like a pretty dang good investment, right? You buy in at 600, you sit on it for a little bit, and then you unload at 1400, boom. That's over a 50% margin, right? Well, wrong, because no one's actually buying these watches for 1400. I mentioned they used to be listed even higher. Now it's dropped down to 1400. Why? Because no one's buying these watches at these elevated prices, especially when there are a bunch more options right now in 2020, right? There's a whole bunch of new pro specs alpinists. The Sarbo 17 is still fairly reasonably priced. Uh, people are just looking elsewhere. They're not gonna buy a blue dial alpinist for 1400 bucks when they can get something else for half the price. But okay, that watch, it started off at the $600 mark. And again, that investment sounds a bit too good to be true, right? You get that watch for 600, you unload it for 1400. Well, let's compare that to a watch that's a little bit more expensive. The highly coveted Rolex 1665 Double Red Sea Dweller. Now about three years ago, you could find these watches averaging around $40,000. Now in 2020, they average around 62 grand, which means if you bought a 1665 three years ago for 40,000, you waited a couple years and you sold it now, you would have made about $22,000 on that investment. Now that sounds great, right? 22 grand, uh, but you fronted $40,000, okay? You gotta spend the money to get that return. But okay, here's maybe a more reasonable example because it has to do with how we function as watch collectors. It's really fun as a watch collector to kind of look at the watch market as a whole and have a healthy debate amongst each other about what watches are not desirable, what watches might become desirable in the future. Uh, that's something watch collectors do all the time, right? It's just fun. Now I've made episodes, some pretty recently, you can click up here, where I kind of try to anticipate uh, which Rolexes might be the ones to get now because it looks like they 
might go up in price in the future, some of which are already going up in price. Watches like the Root Beer, watches uh, like the current modern Air King. These watches, they weren't desirable when they were first released, but in the future, um, I feel like those could be the ones to get. And this is all well and good. This is a healthy thing to kind of look into and explore. But again, unless you have the ability to buy these watches right now, um, what are you gonna do? Okay, again, it takes the money to spend to make the money later. Guys, listen, I know I'm going to get roasted in the comment section because people are going to be very, very upset with what I have to say. Oh, no, that's not true. You don't know the first thing about investing, blah, 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 oh, what have you done, blah, 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 blah. Here's the deal, guys. I wish, I wish there was some secret tip I could give you. I wish that there was some uh, sleep or wash that we could all scoop up for a hundred bucks and then be millionaires in the future. It just, it doesn't work that way realistically. So here's my advice, okay? Buy what you like, buy what makes you happy, buy what you're interested in, buy what you want to wear, what you want to collect and look at, because at the end of the day, your personal investment in your personal happiness, uh, that's the best return on investment you can make. And you guys know, because for a few years I've shared with you on this channel, my philosophy, I buy watches, I collect watches because I love watches, period. What I don't do is like strategically hoard my watches in hopes of like unloading all of them 20 years down the line. I just understand that that's not gonna happen. Another thing is when we look at buying these watches now, right? Okay, let's say that uh, I, I, I want to get into investing in watches. Um, there's a risk. There is a risk there. Here's where I will bring up my shop, okay? There is a risk even buying watches, uh, vintage watches to sell, right? Finding certain watches and selling them. If I buy these watches and no, one's, no one buys them from me, that's a risk. So imagine doing that on a, a grander scale. Imagine buying the Air King right now on a credit card. Imagine buying a root beer right now on a credit card. Imagine putting yourself in debt and sitting on these watches while, again, that debt accrues interest and uh, there's no guarantee that they're gonna be valuable. There's no guarantee you're gonna be able to unload them. There's a risk in doing business, period. But I'm saying um, the best return on investment that you can make where there is honestly zero risk is just buying watches that you will enjoy yourself. So there you have it, guys. Although it's probably not the answer some of you guys wanted to hear, um, that's just, the fact, right? Um, you're not gonna find a sub $500 watch and make a ton of money off of it. It's just unfortunately not gonna happen. But guys, please, uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a healthy debate in the comment section to say the least. So um, yeah, leave me that comment and I would love to hear from you. And again, link to Man Cave Leather. You can check out straps like this and a bunch of other really cool ones there. They're not paying me. They did give me this strap, but uh, yeah, I've worn their straps for a while now and I absolutely love their products. So uh, if you wanna check them out, again, link in the description. And if you do wanna support my shop, go to www.thetimetellershop.com. That is the number one place to buy affordable vintage luxury watches serviced with a one-year warranty hand-picked by me. I wanna thank all of you for watching this content. You make it possible for me to do everything here and at the shop and on Instagram, you freaking rock. I love you for it. Um, yeah, let's get to 100,000. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.